Hi, I'm Wake Speed Jr., Total Steel Piston Rings, and I'm here at RF Engines with my good buddy Bob Day to talk a little bit about an unknown element when we're talking about our ring seal soup. You know, we talk about it all the time, ring seal soup, how all these different variables have to come together to create the correct surface finish so you get good ring seal. And that was the key word we just mentioned, surface finish. We know that surface finish is critical to achieving proper ring seal. One of those overlooked elements of achieving that proper surface finish is the oil or the coolant you use when honing the block. And Bob here is going to tell us a little bit about his recent experience when it happens when you change that oil. So Bob, tell us a little bit about your experience here when you changed honing oil last week. Besides the fact that we started with some old oil that was, I guess you could call it outdated. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna determine that a little bit later. It was here. old school, right? Old, old school, school. Old school. You know, that blacky, sulfury, smells like a machine shop. Yes, that's exactly what it smells like from the old days. When oh, I yeah. used to start out in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that, it's what we've all used, right? I mean, yes. we all know the thing about honing, that, that smell, the feel, the look of that oil. You walked into a place that had fresh oil and it filled up the whole shop. Well, and, and one of the key things to point out about that old school type of oil it was also designed for you know conventional vitrified abrasives. Yes. And what you guys are using here in your CV16 are not conventional abrasives. Tell them what you're using. We hone everything with diamonds. We try to. We get a couple oddball things that we do. Mm -hmm. I have to go back to stones and it kills me once in a while. But I do everything from start to finish with diamonds. Rough them, finish them, done. Alright, so with diamonds, because it's not abrading like the conventional abrasive does it's cutting more like a tool really is there's a need for a different type of oil so you changed up and went from the old school type of oil to a new you know non-sulfur not no, black yes. and all that so again t tell us a little bit about what you've experienced in this changeover in fluid because i already know what you're going to say because I'll tell my dad's experience here <laughs> after the fact, but yeah, share with everybody what your experience has been with keeping the same abrasives, same machine, but just changing the honing oil. I don't have to work near as hard as I did to try to come up with the surface finish numbers that we try to use in these blocks. Some of the fine pressure stuff that I couldn't do any be before I changed the oil, we suddenly do now, and it comes out really, really nice. So you're talking about the numbers, right? I've been holding this, right? What is, what's he holding? All right. Our Mediteo profilometer. profilometer. This is mine. You've got yours. yours. So we're talking about getting those surface finish numbers. We're talking about what does this tell us? You know, it tells you about that, the peaks, the, the valleys, valleys, the core coral roughness. 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 That's all those things we need to support the load, retain the oil, so that we have proper ring seal. So, you know, you said you've been trying to get to those numbers with your previous fluid, with your previous um, abrasives. What is it? So current abrasives, not previous, yes. previous abrasives. But you said trying to say, okay, hey, other people say, oh, you got to run this speed, this load, and you couldn't do I, it. I could couldn't you? do it. Or I'd have to really fight to. I'd have to go back and forth and. Get it too fine, go back to get it in the rough, and this and that, and, and walking back and forth on top of the fence, you know? Mm -hmm. Each side of it back and forth so you could finally get all the numbers right so you could pretty close to finishing that block the way you want. Stand on one foot, rub your head, that's, and all that's that how kind of I had stuff. to do some days, yeah. yes. Walk well, walk away, come back, you know, <laughs> shut it off, come back in the morning. Well, one of the things you mentioned that we were talking the other day about this was chatter. And I mean, we were here oh. that one day, right, when you were working on the uh, the Nissan block, when you yes. were, you know, which is a whole another story by itself. And we saw that the chatter we, marks. We had a little bit of that chatter, yes. And I bet with this new fluid, we wouldn't have any chatter at all. So when you change, talk about that specifically. What did you experience when you changed the fluid in regards to the chatter? There was no chatter. It's gone. 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 So for the same speed, same abrasive. Same everything. Have changed nothing but fluid. Where, where it would chatter before, now nothing. it doesn't. Nothing. It's perfect. It's beautiful. 
I mean, now back to that, you don't have to do the stand on one head and rub your belly and do all that. No, you but can what, actually kind of get there now. But what I'm I'm having to do now is I'm having to relearn what I thought I knew or where I thought I was going. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm not back to square one because I know what I want to do and I know how I want to get there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just not as hard as it was before. So what you're saying is with the new fluid, you think the diamonds are actually cutting better? I can hear them cut it like. 20 pressure on the, on the, on the board, mm -hmm. I can hear the diamonds cutting. There you go. I mean, and you can really, really hear them cutting. That's cool. So, I was going to say, you know, that's your experience, yes. which you've seen in this machine. So, my dad, actually, when he was, you know, uh, would come over here and borrow your machine sometimes yep. in the old days, his, his carding stuff before he got his own, when he got his own rod home to do the two-stroke engine yep. stuff, the machine was same as the one you have here. Yeah, came with somebody else's oil. It wasn't the same as what you guys used to use here, even. Oh wow! And he was like, "All right, same head, same stones, same everything." He's like, "It doesn't cut the same." And you know, he was like, "Tell me about it. So what, what what oil are you using?" And he told me what it was. Like, oh, I was like, "I don't know. It's whatever came in there." And I was like, "Well, once you change, you will put the right stuff in there." You know, and he came and talked to Bob, right, and got the same stuff and. Sure enough, all of a sudden, it started cutting the same. And he was, like, blown away that just changing the fluid could have that big of a difference. Now, he was using the conventional, you know, old-school MAN 845. Yep. But, of course, he was also using original Sun and Stones that he bought back in the 70s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, he had, yes, we stopped go-karting, was 1978, yep. 1979. Well, he had bought Stones back then. Wow. Set on the shelf, been sitting there forever, and was still using them. So those stones made for that fluid, made for that machine. Sounds like a recipe of a ring seal soup almost, right? Well, we, got, like, we got another recipe for soup, yes. We yeah, do. they're all made they're all designed to work together that yielded the result he was after. But by changing just the fluid, it made it messed everything up. And what you're saying is just by changing the fluid with your diamonds, all of a sudden now, it's like having a whole brand new machine that you're relearning how it actually cuts. Yes, it, it's completely cutting different now. I've been in this business mid-80s in some form or another, and this completely blows my mind. And you can see the difference from the, the new oil with these diamonds to the old oil with those diamonds. Is that I've never thought it could make that much of a difference. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So something to think about as you're you know, trying to get your soup, your perfection, uh, to get the proper ring seal, don't forget your fluid and fluid maintenance, right? Because that's one important element. Just, just changing the fluid by itself is a huge deal. But you also mentioned on how to maintain that fluid. You have to keep the fluid clean. There's no way, no way around it. You have to maintain your machine, and you'll learn by the more you use the machine how often you need to clean it. We're not a big production kind of shop by any stretch of the imagination, so we can probably go longer on fluid and filters than somebody who hones a block two blocks a day. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah. I, if I, at the most, I hone a block a day at the most. Okay, yeah. So the more, the more iron you're putting in the fluid the more often you need to clean it out to keep the fluid maintained. And do whatever you can to keep all of the nasty stuff mm -hmm. out of the tank and out of the, the pans underneath. Yeah. Because some of it's always going to make it through the filters. Sure. There's not a perfect filter in the world. Right. Oh, and that's a good point, too. The dirtier the engine block that goes into the home, the more junk that's going to be in your fluid, the more often you have to change it out, the more likely it won't be... It, won't, it won't last forever. Right. So, it, it, you know, fluid doesn't last forever. There are additives in the oil. So, even if you're cleaning the fluid, the additives are still being depleted by the mechanical action that's going on inside uh, the home. 
Yes. So you, you do have to top up. You need to fresh it up in order to, to maintain that level of performance you're after. Right, because now we've got complete capacity with oil. So we're using, we've got twice as much oil going around, keeping it cooler, keeping it cleaner. It's going to last a lot longer, and you're going to have a better product when you're done. Oh, and then like I said, better product because you're going to have, knowing is a surface finish measured by this going to be better, it's going to be more repeatable, more accurate. So more repeatable. hole to hole, engine to engine, your consistency is going to be better. And, of course, that's the key to being able to make progress is having that consistent foundation. You have to have the same base to work with to try and make yourself better. Right. I mean, think about it. That engine block, that is the foundation of the engine. You, you, you got to have that part. You right. have to start there. Yeah. No matter what you do for heads and camshafts and oil pans and oil pumps and all that stuff, if you can't seal the block, it doesn't matter. There you go. Word from the pro. So, hope you enjoyed that. Something to think about that the fluid you use in your home is a key ingredient to your ring seal soup. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.